Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Attorney Javier's Law Lectures for Students. For today's episode, I'll be giving a brief overview of Republic Act Number no. 10142, otherwise known as the Financial Rehabilitation and Insolvency Act, or FRIA for short. Now, uh, since this is just an overview, I won't be discussing the concepts in detail. Instead, I may make future episodes where I will devote a whole episode to a particular topic under FRIA, similar to the previous series which I have uploaded. Now, if you like my videos and you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. Also, please remember that this is only for educational purposes and is not a substitute for proper legal advice or for studying and understanding the law. Now, a like on this video or any of my other videos would also be greatly appreciated. Now, let's begin. So, what is FRIA? The official title of uh, the law is an act providing for the rehabilitation or liquidation of financially distressed enterprises and individuals. And from this, we can see that the law provides remedies in cases of financially distressed enterprises and individuals, or in short, insolvent debtors, who may either be natural persons, meaning actual people and sole proprietorships, or juridical persons, including partnerships and corporations. For FRIA to apply, the debtor must be insolvent, meaning the financial condition of the debtor is such that it is generally unable to pay its liabilities as they fall due in the ordinary course of business or it has liabilities that are greater than its assets. Thus, FRIA applies to cases where debtors may have lost their assets or whose assets are not enough to pay all their obligations or who may have suffered financial misfortune for whatever reason, including circumstances beyond their control or errors in business management decisions. However, take note that FRIA does not apply to debtors which are banks, pre-need companies, insurance companies, or national and local government agencies. Why? Because they are governed by their own special laws. Thus, except for those entities, if the debtor is insolvent, then they can apply for the benefits of FRIA. Now, aside from the insolvent debtor, even the creditors of such insolvent debtor can apply for the benefits of FRIA. Thus, depending on the circumstances, either the insolvent debtor or its creditors or both of them together may apply for the remedies provided for under FRIA. And this is in line with the policy of FRIA to encourage both the insolvent debtor and its creditors to realistically resolve and adjust competing claims and property rights. Specifically, since the financial condition of an insolvent debtor is such that its assets most likely will not be enough to pay all its obligations in full, FRIA provides for the manner by which the assets of that debtor may be preserved and maximized in order to, as far as practicable and possible, to best satisfy all the claims of all the creditors while respecting the priority, preference, and concurrence of any and all conflicting claims. So, instead of the creditors having to fight each other tooth and nail or filing separate cases to claim their debts from the meager assets of a dying debtor, FRIA aims to provide a single forum where the creditors can present their respective claims for payment. Thus, FRIA helps both the creditor and the debtor by providing orderly procedures which save time, effort, and resources which otherwise may have been wasted in fighting over the limited assets of the insolvent debtor. 
the organized processes of FRIA therefore aim to facilitate the settlement of liabilities of the insolvent debtor in the fairest possible way to all parties concerned and this is shown by the following principles as contained in the provisions of law. First, no undue preference is given to any creditor in the, in the settlement of claims against the insolvent debtor. Take note that I emphasized the word undue when I said undue preference because some creditors may hold certain preferences and priorities in their claims which may have been acquired prior to the insolvency of the debtor. So after following the preference and priority of credit, you observe that first, all remaining creditors within the same class or subclass, they all stand on equal footing in making their claims unless a creditor voluntarily agrees to a less favorable treatment. Okay, so because rights can be waived if you uh, remember, no? Second, insolvent debtors are prohibited from disposing, destroying, or concealing their property in fraud of creditors if, especially if they know that FRIA proceedings have already been or are about to be commenced unless such disposition is done in the ordinary course of business. Now, in case of violation of this prohibition, then the persons responsible shall be liable for double the value of the property disposed of or double the amount of the transaction, whichever is higher. Specifically, the persons responsible who may be held liable for violation of this prohibition may be the individual debtor himself, the proprietor, partners, directors, or officers. Now, with specific regard to encumbered property of the debtor, meaning property subject of a lien or security, once proceedings under FRIA have been commenced, such property can only be sold if there is a court order after notice and hearing and only under the situations enumerated in Section 52 of FRIA. If the debtor sells or transfers such encumbered property without a court order, then the court may rescind or declare as void any such transfer, except if it was done in the ordinary course of business. Now, take note that all proceedings under FRIA are summary, non-adversarial, and in rem in nature, meaning that these are actions against the thing itself and are binding on the whole world. In other words, the resolution of FRIA cases affects both direct and indirect interests of other people, and it attaches to the subject matter of litigation. Being a proceeding in REM, Jurisdiction over all persons affected by the proceedings is considered as acquired by publication of the Notice of Commencement of the Proceedings in any newspaper of general circulation in the Philippines. So, what are the remedies or proceedings provided for under FRIA? In a nutshell, FRIA provides for rehabilitation, suspension of payments, and liquidation. Now let's discuss each one briefly, beginning with rehabilitation. FRIA defines rehabilitation as the restoration of the debtor to a condition of successful operation and solvency if it is shown that its continuance of operation is economically feasible and its creditors can recover by way of the present value of payments projected in the rehabilitation plan more if the debtor continues as a going concern than if it is immediately liquidated. Okay, that's quite a mouthful, no? But in rehabilitation, instead of terminating the existence of the debtor and selling off its assets in liquidation to pay its obligations, the debtor is instead given a new lease on life by allowing its operations to continue because 
there might be a better chance that its creditors will get paid from the earnings of the continued, continued operations rather than from the sale of assets in liquidation after its existence is terminated. Now, rehab rehabilitation may either be voluntary if it is initiated by the debtor or by both the creditor and the debtor jointly or rehabilitation may also be involuntary meaning initiated by the creditors of the debtor. In any case, rehabilitation can only be availed of by a partnership, corporation, or sole proprietorship and not by an individual debtor meaning a natural or actual person. Voluntary rehabilitation meaning uh, proceedings initiated by the debtor or by both the debtor and the creditors may be done either in court or out of court. Okay, If it is done in court, this is known as court-supervised rehabilitation, which in turn may be pre-negotiated or not. Okay, In case of pre-negotiated rehabilitation, the debtor and its creditors had previously met and they already successfully negotiated a rehabilitation plan and then they file a petition to ask the court to approve or confirm that pre-negotiated rehabilitation plan. Now, negotiation may also be done out of court, as in the case of out of court or informal restructuring agreements or rehabilitation plans, or OCRA, O-C-R-A for short, which after approval and publication will be binding on all creditors of the debtor. Otherwise, if there has been no prior negotiation, then the normal proceedings will be followed where the debtor will file a petition in case of voluntary court-supervised rehabilitation or the creditors will file the petition in cases of involuntary rehabilitation. In all cases, a rehabilitation plan is required which is what the parties will follow in the restoration of the financial well-being and viability of the insolvent debtor in order to ultimately pay off the obligations to the creditors. Moving on, we have the remedy of suspension of payments, which is simply a petition asking the court to order the suspension of or to delay the payment of the debts of the insolvent debtor. This remedy can only be availed of by an individual debtor, meaning a natural person who has sufficient properties to cover all his debts, but he foresees the impossibility of meeting them or paying them when they will respectively fall due. Note that this remedy does not erase, reduce, nor eliminate the debt. The debt is still there. The amount of the debt remains the same. But here, the debtor is not released, not discharged from his obligation because the sole purpose of this remedy is just to delay or suspend the payment of the debt. Okay? Here, the debtor has to file a petition with a schedule of his liabilities, inventory of assets, and the proposed agreement with his creditors which proposal will then be either approved or, de or uh, rejected at a creditor's meeting called by the court. Note that if a creditor only incurred his uh, credit within 90 days prior to the filing of the petition for suspension of payments, then he cannot vote at the creditor's meeting. If the proposal is approved, by a vote of two-thirds of the creditors with claims representing at least three-fifths of the total liabilities, liabilities of the debtor as mentioned in the petition, then the same will now be open for objections. And if there are no objections or if the objections are denied by the court, then the court can now order that the agreement will be carried out and all parties will now be bound to comply with the terms of such agreement. Now, in case the individual debtor fails to perform his part of the agreement, uh, 
then all the rights which the creditors had against the debtor before the approval of the proposal shall revest or return to the creditors and then they can take any available legal action that they desire against the debtor. Finally, we have liquidation, which if you've already taken up the law on partnerships and corporations, refers to the proceedings which take place after dissolution of the business entity. Liquidation has been defined as the winding up of affairs of the business entity by reducing its assets into money, settling with creditors and debtors, and apportioning the amount of profit and loss. Specific to FRIA, Liquidation refers to the proceedings where claims are filed and the assets of the insolvent debtor are disposed and the proceeds divided amongst the creditors. Now, the rules on liquidation under FRIA, these apply to individual debtors, sole proprietorships, partnerships, and corporations. Similar to rehabilitation, liquidation may also be voluntary, meaning initiated by the insolvent debtor or by both the debtor and its creditors together or involuntary as when initiated by the creditors of the debtor. Now, the prerequisites for filing the different kinds of petitions for liquidation vary. And as I said, I will no longer discuss them here due to time constraints and since this is just an overview. Instead, I will just uh, make a video in the future devoted to the topic of liquidation. Now, aside from petitions for uh, liquidation being filed either by the debtor, its creditors, or both jointly, liquidation may also have been initiated as a different remedy. Specifically, petitions which, have been, which may have been initially filed as rehabilitation proceedings are allowed to be converted into liquidation proceedings in the following cases. First, if the debtor is found to be insolvent and there is no substantial likelihood for the debtor to be successfully rehabilitated under Section 25. Second, in case the debtor acted in bad faith or if it is not feasible to cure the objectionable portions, objectionable portions in the rehabilitation plan, according to Section 67 in relation to Section 66. Third, when the court does not confirm the rehabilitation plan within one year from the filing of the pe petition to confirm such a plan under Section 72. Fourth, in case of breach or failure of the rehabilitation plan under Section 74. Fifth, in case of termination of the proceedings due to failure of rehabilitation under Section 75. Sixth, in case the debtor or creditors acted in bad faith in supporting the rehabilitation plan under Section 80, or seventh, through the filing of the appropriate motion stating that the debtor is seeking immediate dissolution and termination of its corporate existence under Sections 90 and 91 for voluntary and involuntary liquidation respectively. So, once the court finds the petition sufficient in form and substance, proceedings will then commence, including the, the issuance of a liquidation order, which will declare the debtor insolvent and dissolved if applicable, because uh, you cannot dissolve an individual person, no? you just dissolve the business entities, and further ordering the liquidation of the debtor by directing payment of claims due to the debtor to the liquidator. No? It will direct the payment pay it to the liquidator named in the petition, elected by the creditors, or appointed by the court. Okay? Uh, some other orders include the prohibition on the debtor to make payments or transfers of property and directing all creditors to file their claims with the liquidator, among other orders. Thus, the assets of the debtor will be sold either in a public sale, mainly through a public sale, though the court may approve a private sale if the assets are perishable, expensive to maintain, or if it is in the best interest of both the debtor and creditor. In any case, the assets and or the proceeds from the sale thereof will be divided and distributed to the creditors in accordance with the court-approved 
liquidation plan. Ensuring that the rules on concurrence and preference of credit under the Civil Code of the Philippines are followed unless, of course, such rights are voluntarily waived by a preferred creditor. Once the liquidation has been completed, the court will then order the Securities and Exchange Commission to remove the debtor from the registry of legal entities. And once the court receives confirmation thereof, it will then issue an order terminating the liquidation proceedings. So that's it for our brief overview of the Financial Rehabilitation and Insolvency Act. To review, FRIA provides remedies that will benefit both the creditor and the debtor by providing for orderly procedures where the debtor is assisted in fulfilling its obligations and the creditors are given the proper forum by which to obtain satisfaction of their credits from the insolvent debtor. To reiterate, the remedies provided under FRIA are rehabilitation, where the debtor is allowed to continue operations because it is shown that the debtor, uh, that the creditors can recover uh, their credits more if the, rather than if the debtor is liquidated. We also have suspension of payments where the debt of an individual debtor is not erased, but payment of such debt is only suspended or delayed. And we have liquidation where the assets of an insolvent debtor are disposed of and distributed to its creditors according to a liquidation plan following the rules on concurrence and preference of credits. Okay? So, I hope you may have learned a thing or two and I hope to see you soon. Okay? Bye!